the story for today or tonight, whatever time it might be, wherever you are, is called Echo and Narcissus. Echo and Narcissus. Lay back, relax, and allow my voice to soothe you as you learn about this mythology. Let us begin. Echo was a beautiful nymph, fond of the woods and hills, where she devoted herself to woodland sports. She was a favorite of Diana and attended her in the chase. But Echo had one failing. She was fond of talking. And whether in chat or argument, would have the last word. One day, Juno was seeking her husband, who she had reason to fear, was amusing himself among the nymphs. Echo, by her talk, contrived to detain the goddess till the nymphs made their escape. When Juno discovered it, she passed sentence upon Echo in these words. You shall forfeit the use of that tongue with which you have cheated me, except for that one purpose you are so fond of. Reply. You shall still have the last word, but no power to speak first. This nymph saw Narcissus, a beautiful youth, as he pursued the chase upon the mountains. She loved him and followed his footsteps. Oh, how she longed to address him in the softest accents and win him to converse, but it was not in her power. She waited with impatience for him to speak first and had her answer ready. One day the youth, being separated from his companions, shouted aloud, Who's here? Echo replied. Here. Narcissus looked around, but seeing no one called out, Come. Echo answered. Come. As no one came, Narcissus called again. Why do you shun me? Echo asked the same question. Let us join one another, said the youth. The maid answered with all her heart in the same words and hastened to the spot, ready to throw her arms around his neck. He started back exclaiming, Hands off! I would rather die than you should have me. Have me, said she. He left her, and she went to hide her blushes in the recesses of the woods. From that time forth, she lived in caves and among mountain cliffs. Her form faded with grief, till at last all her flesh shrank away. Her bones were changed into rocks, and there was nothing left of her but her voice. With that, 
she is still ready to reply to anyone who calls her and keeps up her old habit of having the last word. Narcissus's cruelty in this case was not the only instance. He shunned all the rest of events as he had done poor Echo. One day, a maiden who had in vain endeavored to attract him uttered a prayer that he might sometime or other feel what it was to love and meet no return of affection. Affection, affection, affection. The avenging goddess heard and granted There was a clear fountain with water like silver to which the shepherds never drove their flocks, nor the mountain goats resorted, nor any of the beasts of the forest. Neither was it defaced with fallen leaves or branches, but the grass grew fresh around it, and the rocks sheltered it from the sun. Hither came one day the youth Fatigued with hunting, heated, and thirsty, he stooped down to drink and saw his own image in the water. He thought it was some beautiful water spirit living in the fountain. He stood gazing with admiration at those bright eyes. Those locks curled like the locks of Bacchus or Apollo. The rounded cheeks, the ivory neck, the parted lips, and the glow of health and exercise over all. He fell in love with himself. He brought his lips near to take a kiss. He plunged his arms into embrace the beloved object. It fled at the touch, but returned again after a moment and renewed the fascination. He could not tear himself away. He lost all thought of food or rest while he hovered over the brink of the fountain, gazing upon his own image. He talked with the supposed spirit. is not one to repel you. The nymphs love me, and you yourself look not indifferent upon me. When I stretch forth my arms, you do the same, and you smile upon me and answer my beckonings with the light. His tears fell into the water and disturbed the image. As he saw it depart, he exclaimed, Stay! I entreat you, let me least gaze upon you, if I may not touch you. With this, and much more at the same time, he cherished a flame that consumed him, so that by degrees he lost his color, his vigor, and the beauty which formerly had so charmed the nymph Echo. She kept near him, however, and when he exclaimed, Alas, alas, she answered him with the same words. He pined away and died. And when his shade passed the Stygian River, it leaned over the boat to catch a look of itself in the waters. The nymphs mourned for him especially the water nymphs. And when they smote their breasts, Echo smote hers also. They prepared a funeral bottle and would have burned his body, but it was nowhere to be found. But in its place a flower, purple within, 
and surrounded with white leaves, which bears the name and preserves the memory of Narcissus. 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 still awake. I hope you enjoyed that story of Echo and Narcissus. Such a tragic ending for them both. I suppose there are things that can be learned from their stories. Oh, vanity. Until next time.